Hello, entrepreneurs. Joe DeCharis, CPA, coming to you live from downtown Flushing, New York, for day six of the five-day challenge. We did day five yesterday, and we we didn't actually get through it because my my guests were uh, unbelievable. Uh, John Limbacher, Mike Wolf, and, and followed up with Larry Broughton. Uh, just mind-bending predictions, and, and I believe every one of them. I believe them because I know all three of them a long time, and <clears throat> they've predicted other things in the past. So, uh, you know, watch yesterday's episode. We need the the YouTube views, so that, that would help us out tremendously. If you're watching live, give me a hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, give me a hashtag replay because it makes me feel good. And tonight I am going to get to finish one of my favorite subjects, which is stealth tax strategies, legal ways to, to reduce your taxes, uh, sometimes substantially, ways to protect yourself from the IRS, from all of these regulations and compliance issues, tax due dates. You know, you miss a due date and you're getting a penalty. Even if it's for a return that, that was zero, I do it. You know, I, I file uh, abatement letters all the time because that's what happens with, with people. And, and it's understandable. I mean, I get them. I had a little entity with, during COVID and we stopped doing payroll. The, you know, it's basically winding down, just paying bills out of there. And I canceled my, my payroll service. You know, believe it or not, I got to pay for a payroll service because I'm not doing it myself. Uh, I don't know why anybody would, but I, so I canceled it. And June last year, I didn't file a payroll tax return and New York state didn't like that. So they sent me a bill for like uh, $3 million, I think. And, and so now I got to write a letter, but I have them all, you know, templates. Uh, but anyway, you know, that that's part of, of the problem that, you know, not only is it complicated and confusing to begin with, and I'm talking about business, take out all the, all the tax stuff and, uh, just doing business is mind bending. <laughs> and now you want somebody, a brand new business owner to go in and, and, and know this stuff. It's, it's impossible by design. So that's why I love uh, this topic. And I'm going to just go full screen here and let's get to it. Yesterday, I did get through my first uh, stealth tax strategy, and that is... Uh, well, before we get into that, that's right, I forgot, but let's talk about what is the value of a business deduction, okay? Even if you're in the lowest bracket, it's 10%. I don't want to give anybody 10% of anything if I don't have to. And it's 10%. So also, you got to understand what taxable income is because there's income and then there's taxable income. And taxable income comes after either your standard deduction or your itemized deduction. Now, in the past, you know, when the dinosaurs were still here, uh, the standard deduction was very low. So a lot of people got to itemize. And it's the reverse now. So most people don't itemize because the standard deduction is so high. Uh, so after you take, let's say you make $100,000, okay, gross, and you take a, your standard deduction, your taxable income is going to be around 75 so for every dollar over 75,000 up to 85 between 75 and 85 you're pay paying 22%. When it goes over that so you see the more you make the more you got to pay. That's not a good system. Well, I mean, so we want to make money but we don't want to pay a high tax. 
So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, one of the ways is to write off your kids because the standard deduction is so high, a child can earn up to $12,400 and not pay any taxes on it, not pay any income taxes on it. Uh, how do you write off your kids? You, well, if you have a business, you give your kids some sort of job that they have to be paid for. It could be social uh, media, it could be filing, it could be cleaning your office, it doesn't matter. Uh, there is no law against hiring your children. It's done all the time. Only now, only now. So if you are in one of these higher tax brackets, so let's say, you know, that, you know, you so 22 percent uh, plus the state. So like if you live in New York State, you're paying another 7 percent. If you're living in Texas or Florida, you don't you don't pay that. But most people are going to pay something to the state also. So I usually add, you know, five to 8% to this. So let's say, let's make it 30% just to make the math easy. Uh, so if this person could deduct 12,400 off of their taxable income, they would save about $3,000. I think about $3,600. And I have the calculation right here. So married filing joint, you see, that's a pretty high. So unless you have like a house with a huge mortgage, uh, even taxes, you're limited to only deducting up to $10,000 of real estate and, and state taxes. So that's a lot. But let's look. So this 12400 the way that you calculate how much you're going to save, because here's the kicker. You can't just pay them. They got to be on on a salary. They got to get a W two at the end of the year, and that comes with some costs because it's not free to have employees. You you have to hire a payroll company. That's about you know forty bucks a month, let's say. You have to uh, pay the payroll taxes. So in this case, it's you're going to save. Uh, about $1,500 a year in taxes net. That's if you're in that bracket. If you're in a higher bracket, the savings go up even more. And if you have more than one child, you can make it even better. But that's not all, folks, because now, now that your, your child has earned income, you could put money into a Roth IRA for them, up to $6,000 a year. Now, if you don't know what a Roth IRA is, it earns money tax-free until you retire. So you could have that whatever money you contribute to your Roth, your child can be a millionaire guaranteed if they, if they were consistently following that kind of strategy. It's simple math. The younger you start, the easier it is to get rich. So why not write off your children? <clears throat> Another little known fact, when you start a business, you need stuff. You need a computer. You need a desk. You need an office. And this is all stuff you probably already have. You already have a cell phone. You already have an internet connection. When you start your business, you can take those personal assets and start writing them off. You can write off your home. You can write off your fish. your cats and dogs who serve as spokesmodels for your business. All you got to do is get a collar with your brand on it and, and they are a spokesperson. <laughs> so those are just a few of the, of the stealth tax strategies. My, my main strategy, my main strategy is is to become an S-Corp. 
And I do have a couple of other bonuses in here for you. But let me explain about the, the S Corp thing. Because if you're in a business and, and you're just starting out, you're a sole proprietor and you are automatically at a major disadvantage. My mom started an Etsy store, and I don't know if she'll make $6,000 a year. It's, it's more of a hobby for her. But I set up an escort for my mom only making 6,000 a year. Now that might not make sense for everybody, but she has a son that's a CPA. <clears throat> and why am I doing that? Because I don't want her to pay Social Security tax on that $6,000. And, and that is a loophole in the tax code that the IRS does not want anybody to know about. And, and that's why they never... Uh, that, that's why they never promoted the S Corp. They don't want people to know about it. It's 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 a it's a game of smoke and mirrors on the internet. There is nothing from the government touting how the power of being an S Corp. They do say that being a sole proprietor is the easiest way to do business, which it is. It's also the most dangerous. So the best strategy is. To be on the offensive, the best defense is a good offense. And you got to take some of these strategies and incorporate them. And, and what I want you to know, let me show you something here. And when I say you, I'm talking to hopefully a small business owner. Uh, but I do have some stealth uh, tools for you. So now, one of the things that we talk about is writing off your home, writing off your home. Well, when you're a sole proprietor, this is what you have to do. There, there's a whole public, there's a publication made just for you because this is for people that are sole proprietors that are not incorporated. And they're going to give you all of this information on how to write off your home principal use, all of the blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is also on the IRS web website. Uh, they want to make sure that you know what you're supposed to do. Very nice of them. Uh, this is a Schedule C. Now, this is what all sole proprietors have to file their taxes on. And it should come with a big uh, warning sign up here. Warning, warning. Uh, if you're old enough to remember uh, Lost in Space, uh, the robot, warning, warning. <laughs> uh, so you have a, a special form which commingles your business with your home, with, with your personal. And look at this, folks, just because, you know, you being a sole proprietor and, and having this special treatment, you get your own line on where to deduct the business use of your home. And you also get your own form, business use of the home. This is important. It must be important because they got stuff all over the place on this. So now, if you want to be stealth, this is how you become stealth. When you have an S Corp, there is no more business use of the house. You file on a, on a form 1120S and, and there is no form for business use of your house on an 1120S. What you are allowed to do is this. You are allowed to reimburse yourself. Actually, the corporation will reimburse you, the homeowner, for using part of your house. And, and how do we figure this? Well, it's the same exact rules, believe it or not, for how employees get reimbursed from their jobs. It's documentation. And, 
And what you do here is you determine the, the percentage of business use very simply, how many square feet, how many, how much is office? It's 20%. Okay. So now over here is we have some list. And these are, you know, if you know anything about bookkeeping, these are the categories that the expenses go in. Uh, these are the vendors. That's who you pay. Over here, I have all of the instructions. Uh, I also have the agreement that <coughs> you will have with your corporation. So over here, it's very simple. If you're paying rent, you put down rent. 20% of it is deductible. And now we do this on a monthly basis. This is how this is the bookkeeping part of it. This is the documentation part. Uh, so now you have direct expenses and indirect. So this is indirect. You're just taking a portion uh, of your home, whatever that is. Now, let's say if you have a garage outside that you need for storage, well, that adds to the square footage. So whatever you're using, you all you have to do is document that it's business use. How do you document that? You could take pictures, you keep your, your receipts, uh, you have your agreement, you have this schedule. If you have that stuff, the IRS cannot disprove it. It would be very, very difficult if you ever got audited. Now, guess what, folks, since, since you brought that up? Uh, these are the things that get you audited. This, I almost showed my hand there. But this form is what causes the audits. They want to know everything about why are you mixing your business with, with your personal. And they want it that way. They don't want people to incorporate and do stuff that I'm showing you here. <clears throat> so when you're a corporation, this is where the number goes. Everything that has to do with your business is nowhere to be found on your tax return except right here. One little box, one number that flows through from your S-Corp return. Okay, nice and neat and simple and your stealth. What you do with this, so you have the indirect, uh, the direct and the indirect. Direct are things that are specifically for that part of the of the the home the office let's say you paint the office that's a hundred percent so you know with this little schedule here it's actually going into the columns adding it up and at the end of the day you're gonna have okay so this this comes out to be the deductible amount uh, that seems pretty high. I think my math is, is off there. Uh, oh, maybe not. But at the end of the day, so you're going to write, the corporation is going to cut you a check for $6,049.59. This is a an expensive place to live in, I guess. <laughs> but uh, anyway, let me get back. That's my story. I'm sticking with it. Joe DeChara, CPA, over and out. God bless. Uh, if you want to connect with me, just go to uh, timewithjoe.com. If, if you want some uh, free advice, you get one, one shot. It's tax season. Uh, please don't call me or, or book a, a slot just to pitch me. Uh, you can do that. You can join my mastermind, mastermindwithjoedechara.com. We meet every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern and every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern. So good night. God bless. Thank you.